Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we'll be checking out a new product from TBS. So this is a product that some people might wonder why I'm actually looking at it because I've said in the past I always try to separate my RX and VTX as much as possible. So yeah, you may have guessed what this is. This is the saucily named TBS Crossfire 69. And what this is, is basically a Crossfire Nano making sweet love with a Unified Pro. Something like this where it's all, all together, maybe this is good for quads. But I'm thinking it might be good for small things too. So that's why I've got this. So what do we get in the packet? Well, let's have a look. So here we have our sort of fairly discreet plastic bag. Maybe that's to go along with the 69 moniker. Uh, you know, TBS do ship out a lot of stuff in plastic bags, which to be honest, I'm not overly keen on. It's, you know, plastic is not really that great for the environment and there's nothing to say this can be recycled. So, you know, why not put it in boxes? But anyway, uh, gripes aside, let's take a look. I have had this out before, uh, I've had plans for it, so uh, I've, yeah, I've had a, a little look already. But there we go, that's it. So we get an Immortal T antenna. So yeah, this is a, a standard uh, 900 megahertz uh, Immortal T. This one is for 868. We get a uh, SMA to uh, UFL pigtail. These are both using uh, IPEX1 uh, UFL connectors. So not the horrible small IPEX4s. We get a cable that plugs into the actual unit itself. And then we get this bag here that's got a few other little bits and pieces inside it. So this gives you a few mounting options. You get this uh, little square here that you can just put the unit inside and then double side it onto something. You get this version here, which you can use with, uh, I believe you can use to 30 by 30. Well, it's something like 30.5, isn't it? Uh, but the back plate will just sort of stick onto there as well. And what you also get is this uh, RF shield here. So you put that on your module and it, it shields RF interference, basically. So let's have a, a look at the board. OK, so I'm going to try and get this the best I can. I'm trying to get it a bit brighter, but we get a lot of reflections on it. But that seems OK there. So you can see it's a TBS Unifier version one and it is a 5.8 gigahertz system you have some connections down here you have a little button there for i guess the bind and on this side you have the two antennas input so you have the uh, crossfire input on this side and you have the vtx antenna on this side and obviously this here is the connector for your little cable that you get and finally, we have the little RF shield that just pops on like that. Sorry about the glare. So you can still access the antennas. But other than that, there's really not a lot to say about this. Obviously, where they're using a Unify Pro and Crossfire Nano technology in one unit, it's going to be absolutely fine. The, you know, those two products work really well, so there's no reason why this shouldn't. One thing that did concern me when I was first looking at it is that there wasn't originally any smart audio support. I mean, TBS are looking to move over to like a, I think a trap you referred to it as a crossfire bus where everything is just goes over crossfire basically. So you change your VTX channels using crossfire or, or the crossfire protocol, I should say. The problem is if you haven't got a fusion uh, VTX and all that sort of stuff yet at the moment it won't work so it won't work with INAV or anything like that so having 
you know, completely just removing smart audio, I don't think was a great idea. But it seems like, you know, Trappy and the other guys at TBS have actually listened. And there's a new firmware. It's, it's still in beta at the moment, but it should be production quite soon, which re-enables smart audio. It basically allows you to put it onto one of the UARTs. This has got two UARTs on it. So you'd put cr Crossfire on one UART and smart audio on the other. Unfortunately, that means that if you want to use something like Mavlink as well, you, you've got issues there. So there, there is a, a, a compromise. It's a shame that they didn't sort of think about it at the beginning, that people still might want to use the old system until the new system is more widespread. But, you know, it's, it's better than nothing. I mean, they could have put it on the audio, uh, like old Unify Pros. They, you know, you either plugged in a microphone or it's smart audio into the audio. So they could have just done it like that if, you know, it had been designed there in the first place. But I'm happy now because I don't use Mavlink and I can change channels. So just to go over why I've actually gone for this, when it first came out, I thought, well, surely this is just for quads because everything is right next to each other. So wouldn't it be better using Tracer rather than Crossfire? And you can get a Tracer version of this. So yeah, that was just me not actually looking into it. But then I started thinking, yeah, we, we have little 250 gram models or labeled 250 gram. So this, this is something small. There's no way, even if I really wanted to, I could put something in the wings to separate it. The wing is really thin uh, and also connecting it up would be a nightmare. And believe me, I did actually think about it, about maybe having a connector block um, and putting them out in the wing. But in the end, I thought I would give this a go. So we will see what it's like once this plane is finished. Uh, and you can see where it's going. Uh, but anyway, that is the TBS Crossfire 69. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to help get this video out to more people so they can learn about the Crossfire 69 too. Thank you guys for watching. Flying models like you stole them. I'll see you on the next one.